Hello, you join me on another beautiful build day. Sun is shining, it's a bit cold, but it's lovely. Um, Nem's catching up on a few emails and a bit of work this morning, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a tour of, not the van, because the van is there, we've already done the van, but of just our situation, um, where we are. We're actually at Nem's mum's, because we are houseless, not homeless. Um, we sold everything, if you didn't already know, we sold everything back in 2020 um, and decided to live in a camper. We'd already built our Volkswagen T5, aka Vandercamp, in 2020. So we decided to move into that and spend full time in that. Um, obviously lockdown changed a lot of things. We managed to get away to Spain and Portugal for quite a while. Um, but then fast forward, and we've obviously bought a new van to convert. We've got nowhere to do it. Now, thankfully, we are very lucky to have uh, a parent that will have us with the big van, that big, some people call it a monstrosity on the driveway. And she's got a big drive, which is, we are very lucky, we, we do admit that. Um, and she's got a garage, which we've turned into a little bit of a workshop. So you can see, it looks a bit of a mess, but I assure you it's very tidy. So I thought I'd just give you a quick little tour. Um, maybe it'll give you some ideas of what you might need or we'll give you some tips on what helps us. Because um, what we've done, we've kind of set up, we've got an old cabinet which we found there, just free. We were gonna put it in the van, but I think we're just gonna use the doors and stuff off it now. So we've sort of made a bench there and then I've got a work table anyway, the bench. Um, because again, I've, I've got tools from, because I'm an electrician by trade, so I've already got a lot of tools. So obviously I'm lucky that way as well. We haven't had to buy a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, we've got a rip saw. This is really handy for chopping lengths of wood. Um, extremely handy. Um, but this was literally like, it's probably like 30 quid, like 10 years ago. And it's still, still going strong. Um, we've got a drill driver like a combi drill, just for drilling holes and stuff. And then a small impact driver. Uh, these are really handy. However, you don't need, you do need one of these. So if, if you've just got this, it'll get you by, it's fine. Another, I can't think of the word. You must have this tool basically, if you're building a van. It's a square edge and it's not just for wood, but when you've got your van on the drive or anywhere and it's not quite level, and obviously the more weight you put in it, the lower it's gonna get. This will make sure, so even if the van is, let me just, so if the van is flat, obviously it'll give you a straight edge. But even if the van is on the wonk like that, it'll still give you that straight edge. So you can't rely on the spirit level, obviously, whereas that will make sure everything is square. Get yourself one of these. We've got like tools. And then what we've done, we've got loads of pallets and it's not a very fun job breaking pallets, but all this wood, basically all that there, all this here, this, all of that wood is all free and it's all pallet wood. Um, and it's designed, a lot of this stuff was designed to carry metal on pallets, big sheets of metal. So it's very strong pallet wood. Um, it can be quite heavy, but some of it is like hardwood. Now, if you don't know the difference between hard and soft wood, um, hardwood's got like a tighter grain um, let me show you if I can. That wood is quite tightly, it's like a tight grain, which hardwood, it, it, it's weird to say, but it does feel hard. So it's much more hard wearing and robust. Whereas this sort of timber, like CLS timber, you can see the grain is, you know, a lot more widespread. So this is more of a soft wood. You can tell as well because it's a lot lighter. So this is more like construction. Whereas this is for like heavy duty stuff, window frames, door frames, maybe things like that. Um, so we've got a bit of a mixture. You can see different thicknesses. So with pallets, you can, these are light duty pallets. So these tend to break, but these are great, just lightweight stuff for you know putting on walls and ceilings and things. And then we've got these thicker ones, but some of these have a lovely grain. You can see there. Like the grain is really nice. So once that, I know it's got some holes, but give that a real good rub down and a bit of oil. 
and the grain comes out it looks amazing so we might looking to use those for our work top um what else have we got we've got we've actually these are the bits of wood we actually purchased cls timber because we need it new and so it's straight and fresh um but we have got old bits and then we've also got these these were off big pallets as well these are the ones off that carried metal pallets so you can see it's it's kind of like cls but it's like sawn timber so it's rough but you can see these are very robust this is like a bit like hardwood um so we're going to use this for our bed frame i think um and then the other thing which we found is cladding so we found this bit of a storage unit that was getting rid of loads of stuff loads of wood and we found a huge pallet that had exterior cladding so you can see there it's got like and it's all in pieces so it's a bit of a jigsaw but i mean you can see the amount we've got if i move that all of this so nemi's mom is a great puzzler so i think we're going to get her to come and uh, give us a hand putting that together and um, the other thing we've got which we'll show you when we start doing installing the wood is this stuff now this is like you kind of put this between your laminate floor and your wooden floor underneath. So it creates, it's like a bit of a membrane, but it's um, like an underlay. There was someone getting rid of all this. They'd obviously used what they needed, didn't know what to do with it. So yeah, that, and we've got a whole new one there. Again, free of charge. Um, ah, here she is. Here I am. She's give up with work and decided to come and join me in the sunshine, I think. I don't blame her, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You need one of these. Not so much the Makita one, but it's a radio. Um, the other tool we've got, which is very handy, is one of these. So it's just a handheld saw, basically. A circular saw. Now this is a powered one. It's 110 volts. It used to work on building sites. So it needed to be lower voltage. Um, but you can get hander. We've, I've got a really old one. So I've got an old little old battery one as well. Um, so that does the trick, but they're really handy. The other tool that is highly recommended is one of these, a jigsaw. So as long as you have combi drill or drill driver and one of these, a jigsaw, You'll be fine you can do anything with a van because these are pretty much all we used when we built our last van even though we had other tools which we did use we didn't need them um it just it was just handy to be honest and then if you can it's worth you can even hire these even if you've got like you know hire it for a month or something these are handy and it makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier especially if you're doing like mitre cuts and 45 degree cuts and all these shapes and sizes because you can move this around you can see there so you can move this to different degrees yeah very handy very nice oh the most important wall ear defenders eyeglasses as the americans call them and also the other th important one are masks you need these things um can't emphasize how important it is that if you're using any drill tool you need to have goggles on and these glasses are great because these you can have these on all day because they're pretty much clear all around you don't even know you're wearing them plus you look cool as well so that's the main thing get yourself some marigolds um, we use these because if you're using the little disposable ones you get in the boxes like the medical gloves um, it's just waste because you've got hundreds in there and they only last, you know, they only last a few hours if you're hard working with them and stuff because they rip. Whereas these, I mean, we've got a pair. Sorry, it keeps spinning you around. We've got a pair here, which I've had since before starting the van, actually. They're a bit mucky, but put some white spirit or terps on them or something, give them a scrub and they clean up and they're still going now. So rather than wasting tens, twenties, thirty pairs of disposables, just get one pair of marigolds plus they come further up your arm as well so and the best and the main thing is you look fantastic wearing them so the next plan after the window 
is we need to, let me step back and give you a full view, don't fall out the van. We've got to button the ceilings. We need to put pieces of wood on these supports here because we're having 50 mil of insulation. This is only 35 mil. So we need to put an extra 20 mil on top of here. So just little bits of wood so we can get it insulated. Um, we've actually, we did start the roof last night. We did a bit of a later one. And what we're doing, I don't think you can see in our van. I don't know if it's the same as all Luton, but you might be able to see there, the roof curves. So it's actually higher in the middle than it is on the edge. And that's just purely so when obviously rain falls, get water on, it can run off. So it's actually higher there than it is at the end. So what we're doing, we just put in some pieces. It's actually 45 by 45 mil bits of wood across. And then we're putting those on nearly everyone because we need to do skylights. So we've done those two there, you can see. Just get the light. So we've done those two. We've just put a support in there. That is purely just to fix onto that. So it's supporting. Now the roof's not gonna be weight bearing, so we don't need anything. We're not gonna be stood up there. So obviously with this being fiberglass, you can't stand on that. These, you can see there, they're quite flimsy. So it's not weight bearing. So that's purely so we can put sky, attach a skylights to. Um, and then we can hang some, we're thinking of putting some board on the ceiling, but we're still unsure about that one. So what we did last night was, do, 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 designed a bit of a roof plan. So you can see here, let me get my mouse. These, we've just, these are 200 watt solar panels. Now we've actually sourced these from uh, Renergy or Renergy, however you say it. We want some good quality panels. Um, now we can fit three on there, three 200 watt panels. And we've still got a properly calculator electrical system. Um, but in Vandercamp, it's 220 watts and it's okay. I mean, in the summertime, we don't need any more. However, when it's cloudy and a bit more winter time, we need more power. And we'd like to go long term off grid with this van. So we've measured the panels. We've actually, these panels are drawn. So that is roughly where they could sit. So then that gives us options of where to put our skylights. So we've designed one there and one there. So as you can see, with that being the bed at the front. So that skylight will be here. So we'll build a frame. So a square skylight there. And then the other one, it's roughly just after the door. So the kitchen's gonna be there. So it's full just above the kitchen. And I believe at the top of my head, it's in this panel here, but we need to measure it. So it'll be similar to that one, just in this panel. So we'll make a cutout, build a frame. We're actually gonna build them ourselves. One, because it's a lot cheaper. And two, um, because why not? <laughs> We're gonna keep referencing to this SketchUp purely because I can't emphasize how useful it is. I mean, for a Luton van, it's nice because a Luton van is square, so it's very easy to design. A actual panel van's a bit harder because they're not square. But um, what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is do a bit of a tutorial on how to use this for designing your van. Um, it takes a lot of time to learn, but putting the you know a good few hours of learning in means that once we've finished and you know the the sun's gone in, I was sat down for a couple of hours last night just designing this layout, and then the next day we can come and. We can even use these measurements because I've designed it with all the supports in place. In fact, I'll just give you a show you quickly. If I take the roof away. So I've taken the roof away there and you can see what I've done is these are the supports. So these are these. So they're not exact, but they're near as damn it, the same measurements. So <clears throat> basically put those into SketchUp. And then, like you see there, we've designed our skylights around it so we can see the sizes. We can even put dimensions in. So we can use the computer now to roughly measure how big we need them to be. Okay, these roof pieces here, like I said before, they're 45 by 45, so this is the wood. 
so it's square, so it's 45 by 45. And what we've done is just cut a piece out there. Now that purely is, is for sitting in this gap here. So what we'll get, this bit sits a bit lower than there. And what we want to do is try and get it to fix onto that part. So when it sits in here, I'll actually show you a piece we did earlier. Here we go. So that's how it will sit. Now this here, we're using as a bit of a membrane. So when it's insulated, we want to try and cover as much of this metal surface as possible because as we found out in the Luton van is the condensation is very bad. As in these walls get soaked, um, the ceiling gets soaked and then this rail here, you can see fills of water and it all runs out down that end. So as you walk down the van, you get a waterfall there. So what we're doing, we're creating a bit of like a thermal bridge. So because we can't insulate behind this, we're using this as a bit of an insulation. Plus it means the wood's not coming into contact with the metal. So if there, does, if there is any bit of condensation built behind here, it can't actually get onto the wood. And this is, this is breathable, it's only like foam. It's kind of like underlay foam, but we just use that between wood and the metal. And another point is, if you're building your van out of wood onto metal, it's gonna creak. As the wood expands with temperature, or well, expands and contracts with different temperatures, it's gonna creak, so this stops creaking. And we can honestly say with Van der Kamp, because we built that out a lot of wood out of pallet wood, it doesn't creak at all, and we've used it. We use it between these panels and the wood that's gonna go on top, so we'll just put the membrane behind the wood and it means then if the wood does move slightly or grow, it's not actually touching the metal. So yeah, handy point that is, handy tip. Ceiling is done. Look at this ceiling. Lovely. She's hard at work. Right, so next job. Now the ceiling, well, the battens are in anyway. The ceiling is not, obviously not complete, but the battens are in. So the next job, we're putting bits of wood on the walls. And what we're using is, when we had the van, there were strips of wood all along. So obviously when stuff was being transported in here, it could be attached to these wooden bits and I'll show you them. It's these. So these were fixed to the wall like so, like this. So we're gonna use, because this is 20 mil thick, now our insulation's 50 mil from the here. And then this is, hang on, I can't see, that's 35 mil, so we need 20 mil on top of this. So that works out quite well, doesn't it? So what we're doing is, this is the wood here, nice. So we're stripping, we're ripping this down the middle, cutting it in half to give us these. So obviously we don't need the width of this. And we've got enough of that now to use these on the walls. I shall show you. So we'll fix that to there, which will give us Plenty of room, just over 50 mil, I think it is. And then we can board on top of this then for our finished walls. And like we did for the roof, that piece of like foam between, we're gonna do the same with these. And the lovely wife has a knife. Hello. Oh God. <laughs> Watch your fingers and toes, everybody. See, so NM's just cutting down this foam. We've got it in a reel. And I was just given it by a friend who was renovating the house and they, they used it as like an underlay for laminate floor. So yeah, they just give it us. So we thought, well yeah, might as well use it. And it comes in handy. So Nem's ripping them. And we're doing the walls.
the day. So we've got the walls in. Walt. Wall. Um, yeah. So like I said before, we've covered all this in that 20 mil on like hardwood. We've put some battens across there, purely so we can strengthen the window because we cut out that support there where the window went. So it's aluminium support. So we put these just to strengthen the window. Plus we've got a fridge and a unit there, so that gives us something to secure the frame for the fridge and stuff too. Um, but yeah, all this side wall framed. Um, so the next job is to build the bed frame, so then we can do this bit. And then the other job, not that one, but to build that and enclose that. So hopefully it's a lovely day again tomorrow. Um, see you next time. So far we've discovered that we've built the strongest wardrobe in the world. Quite cosy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ceiling's going to be so close to our faces. <laughs>